Uh, thanks so much, Jill, and thanks everybody for attending the webinar today. Um, you know, uh, we're approaching Thanksgiving just a couple days away, and uh, we thought uh, we'd mix it up a little bit in terms of our content, and just maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, simple and, and, and focused on the point, you know, personal stuff, and get into cybersecurity tips for the holidays. And um, I want to make sure we leave a lot of Q&A Q time today, because uh, obviously people have different concerns around the holidays, but we'll we'll get into all of it. So uh, just a brief introduction, um, you know, uh, if you uh, come and join me for other webinars or talk to me in person, you'll know that I talk about social engineering and phishing all the time. You know, uh, the biggest uh, target uh, when you're talking about uh, cyber attacks is usually less the technology and more the user. Um, while you have uh, attacks based purely on vulnerabilities, um, it's and uh, it's often cheaper and easier to go after users and get them to volunteer information or click the wrong thing. Uh, and if you want to look at it from a sort of a, a business perspective, you know, if you were a, a cyber criminal, the market for attractive targets is really strong this time of year. I mean, think about all of the commerce that's happening um, around this time of year, all the communications, the travel. Um, people being busy with their jobs. Um, I think it's just, it creates so much noise and uh, cyber criminals really like to exploit um, uh, user ignorance and uh, get you to uh, lower your guard against things. And I feel like this time of year is a great time to get, you know, uh, uh, victims who might lower their guard. Uh, everybody is trying to shop and get everything done and I don't think they necessarily pay attention to these threats maybe as much as they would. Uh, otherwise. Um, uh, it's not going to really be a surprise to anybody that this year, Black Friday slash Cyber Monday, and I would just say online shopping and commerce in general will be bigger this year than last year. Uh, this is a continuing trend. Uh, expect more and more and more. Of course, the more we engage online, uh, the more we will have this kind of cyber crime. That's just a matter of, that's just a numbers game. Um, Another thing I should point out with these types of threats is it's often not just getting into an Amazon account or having access to a credit card number. I mean, absolutely, yes, um, there are going to be criminals out there who are trying to, to uh, you know, create fraudulent charges on your credit card or maybe order a gift card off of Amazon for themselves and resell it or, or something like that. But this is also a time where we can maybe steal credentials and get into other systems, you know. Uh, the the person shopping on Black Friday uh, create uh, clicks something on a shopping email, but then that al allows access into the device where they can then do bad stuff in the work environment. So it's really, even though this is a very personal topic, I think that this could have impact to the business side too. So we can't be too narrow in terms of how we think about these threats. Um, Another thing I wanted to talk about, and we'll get into it later, is we can't take the product out there for granted. Um, uh, again, this is a, everyone sees the big shiny stuff on sale, uh, but there's a lot of fraud with the product side and a lot of cyber threats uh, strictly on that. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. So uh, here's the agenda uh, for today. So first, you know, before we get into all the bad stuff, I do wanna talk about some items to be thankful for. You know, uh, there's there's uh, things out there that we should be very happy about when it comes to cybersecurity on the web in general. And uh, we wanna talk about it because there are some successes. There are very, there are very good things happening on the technology side. Uh, I wanna talk about uh, something called malvertising. So uh, this is a big uh, threat, especially this time of year, which is uh, advertisements that are malicious. And uh, we're gonna get into that a little bit because uh, oftentimes uh, it's not necessarily the site you go to, but the ad uh, on that site that could be a cause for a threat. I'm gonna talk a little bit about social media and charity scams. Um, so uh, obviously uh, with all this communication on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and so on, um, there are plenty of bad actors uh, out there and also uh, bad charities, unfortunately. You know, uh, we, I, I, I can speak for myself. I know this time of year, uh, I, I know I like to do my donations at the end of the year. It's just sort of a holiday thing that I do. And they know that this stuff's out there. So we want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I want to talk about uh, misconceptions about Black Friday and Christmas Eve. You know, I think everybody thinks about 
you know, uh, Jingle All the Way, and like uh, all all these uh, people say, well, it's Black Friday, we got to rush to the store, get in, and make our shopping, and, and it's Christmas Eve, we got to get those last second gifts and get everything together. And I think the natural thought is that Black Friday and Christmas Eve are sort of the hubs of this kind of cyber threat, but. Um, I think you need to think about uh, cybersecurity around the holidays a little bit differently than that. Um, it's not just about these two highlighted days. It's really about a season and, and trends within that season. Uh, we want to talk a little about secure payment methods. So, uh, you know, uh, there's only so much we can do uh, on the web itself, but what can we use, you know, in terms of our behaviors, what kind of payment methods can we use to uh, protect ourselves and what kind of sort of safety nets do we have there so I want to talk about that a little bit uh, and then we're going to talk about utilizing and shopping for the right devices so um, first you know how do we use our devices in a proper way but also when we're shopping how do we shop in a responsible way you know we're going to do we go to the right websites and what products should we look for and how should we vet this stuff and uh, as I mentioned I really do want to do some Q&A today I, uh, I imagine that some people have some pretty uh, unique uh, challenges. So uh, I thought we would want to spend some time on that too, as, as always. So good stuff. Let's talk about some good things. And you can see my little buddy here has got his big thumbs up. <laughs> um, I, I think, and I know maybe not everybody uh, loves the, the laws and regulations out there, but I do feel that, uh, and you've seen it in 2019, I think you're going to see it uh, beyond, is that there's been a more serious focus in general on data privacy laws and regulation. Um, when stuff is, uh, when we have uh, more personal data, more commerce happening on the web, uh, it's really important uh, that we have a good framework around it. And as I think more of these attacks happen, I do think that states, municipalities, uh, industries, uh, the government itself, you know, in terms of government contractors and uh, commerce sites have been scrutinized a little bit more in terms of how they regulate their security. Uh, this benefits you as the consumer. Um, you know, uh, I know there's, uh, you know, finger, you know, hand wringing and stuff about uh, GDPR, you know, the European uh, Privacy Protection, and uh, I know California has a privacy law. And I think as a manager, that can be difficult to manage. Um, but it really does benefit the consumer at the end of the day, and so I think that's really good. Um, there's expanded access to multi-factor authentication. Uh, as you know, anyone who's attended my uh, webinars or, or talked to me in the past, I'm a big believer in multi-factor authentication. Uh, simply put, uh, for the things that really matter to you, a username and a password is simply not enough. Um, Really, there is no safe password, and it only takes uh, enough brute force to crack into something. Uh, and now, I think uh, I, you know, most uh, you know, banking sites, uh, shopping sites, uh, a lot of uh, you know, gaming platforms, anything where you have uh, payment and stuff and personal stuff going in, there's a good chance they're going to offer a free uh, ability to do multi-factor authentication, where you get that text message or the app on your phone that you have to verify on. And I just think that this has really protected the accounts a lot more. And this kind of availability of this technology, I think is really beneficial to many organizations and people. Uh, platforms such as Windows 10, Mac OS X, iOS, and you could go down the line, you know, uh, uh, Android, et cetera, uh, they're probably easier to patch and maintain than they were in the past. Um, they, you know, Windows, just to give an example, uh, they, Windows 10 does these roll-ups with big security updates. Um, it makes it a lot easier to see what's out there and what needs to be patched up on the security side. Um, that's not to say it's perfect. Uh, we are very serious here in terms of managing our clients, making sure their patch management gets done properly. Um, but uh, it's not as disjointed as it used to be. It's a little bit smoother. You tend to have less fails. Uh, and uh, the results tend to be a lot, a lot better when managed properly. Uh, personal VPNs are on the rise, which can help privacy. So um, if you, uh, I know you see maybe a lot of YouTubers and uh, other, other people advertise things like NordVPN or, or um, a number of other products that are personal VPNs that you can use to mask where you uh, browse from or uh, encrypt all your traffic and ultimately this is a good thing now granted and I'm spoiling a little bit for later in the in the webinar 
we need to vet these products, make sure that we're using the right personal VPNs, that we're not using a product that maybe has uh, shadowy organs or, so, or, or, or such so that we're actually doing this uh, safely. But overall, I mean, having that uh, increased access to encryption and privacy is really better to keep our personal data uh, private. So um, I think that that's been a, a really nice thing uh, in 2019 and beyond. Uh, so uh, let's talk real quick about malvertising, some of the some of the bad stuff. And you can see here maybe uh, this is a uh, sort of a fake link uh, to an ad. It's, you know, install the HD video player. Notice that this is kind of um, this is kind of designed, I think, to look like an Adobe product. So uh, malvertising are ads with some kind of hostile application tied to it. So it's you know even though it is uh, appears as like a pop up window or a banner or something like that within a window, uh, it, it all it is is a link to something bad. Um, uh, these very much uh, are uh, out there. So uh, I was looking into this organization, uh, Confiance. Uh, they uh, protect uh, malware and ads. Basically, they work for companies um, to try and avoid uh, bad ads appearing on sites. Uh, they believe that malvertising follows a few seasonal trends, and this was based on a study that they did. So the first was one in 100 online ads were malicious uh, or disruptive, and that may not seem like a lot, right? One in 100, you know, that's a 1% chance, but consider, uh, consider the next statistic, which is that there's an average of five ads per page, and an average is of five pages per user session. Now, I would consider myself, bench ruler, not the average person. Uh, I know I am a heavy duty uh, web browser. I mean, just think of if I visit, it's pretty safe to say that I visit 20 websites a day. So chances are, if there are five ads per page and five pages per user session, I'm 20 pages per user session, which is, I think, low, that there's a good chance I'm running into one of these hostile ads and I'm just having to dodge that minefield. It means that basically, uh, there is, uh, if, if I'm the average person uh, and I'm there's five ads per page and five pages per user session, that means that there's a 25% chance, approximately, that I will run into one of these fake ads. Um, so uh, you should consider things like Adblock Pro, although that could interfere with browsing, but you should consider stuff like that as well as really be very, very careful where you click within these sites. Um, these ads are not safe necessarily and unless it's something that we really really trust there's really no reason to click on ads period so you, we really need to be careful about that sort of thing uh, and it's uh, and the reason I bring it up now is that malvertising tends to be on the rise uh, during the holiday season you know that this is a thing that's exposed and unfortunately for uh, ad providers such as Google I think it's very difficult for them to uh, filter out all the bad stuff that they ultimately uh, put on websites. So um, let's uh, pivot a bit to and talk a little bit about social media and charity scams. So uh, fundamentally, uh, this time of year, uh, scammers are really looking to take advantage of goodwill, and that's part of how they attack. So what do they do to do this? Uh, the first is chain letters. And I've seen ones, you know, I, I made a, uh, I made an example. Um, I've seen things before where people say, well, if 5,000 people share this thing, so-and-so is going to donate a million dollars to hungry children or something like that. And then it gets shared a million times on Facebook or uh, the chain letter gets sent around uh, email accounts. And I think to myself, why would some rich person who has was generous enough to give a million dollars to a worthy cause, why would they put the condition on this charity to be whether you created this gigantic chain letter? And the answer is it's not real. It's really just designed to get you to put through things and, and volunteer stuff. Um, a really common attack this time of year is, is like a, a friend or family member needs money to make it back home, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's like sort of a Steve Martin, John Candy in planes, trains, and automobiles type thing. You know, uh, I just need $500 Western Union so I can get back to the family and stuff like that. That's a very common attack this time of year. And again, it's taking advantage of goodwill and people disarming themselves. You know, they care about their family. They want to make sure that they take care of them. And so 
they fall for something that is uh, not legitimate. So I'd be very uh, skeptical if you get something like that. Hey, uh, check out this Christmas card we made this year. Just click this link. Uh, you know, again, another kind of phishing scam where, uh, you know, a lot of people like to distribute digital Christmas cards and photographs and stuff like that. And all that's fine, but just keep in mind that mixed within that, there's a decent chance that some uh, illegitimate person is trying to send you a virus or get you to volunteer information or something like that. Um, they will do things like that because they know that this is a popular way that people communicate this time of year. Um, there's also uh, fake landing pages. So think about, let's say for the example, the Red Cross. Um, there's not much stopping me from uh, creating, uh, getting a fake URL. And it, I think in last month's webinar, we talked that most new uh, domain names are actually used for fraud these days. But take a new uh, domain name, uh, take a bunch of graphics from a legitimate charity like the Red Cross, uh, create fake graphics, et cetera, somehow link to that site, and then start collecting people's money. Uh, there's not much stopping that sort of thing. And um, we're going to get to it in a little bit, but if you use a debit card to pay for that, that money's gone. So uh, this is another sort of thing that's, that's out there. We should be very, very ca uh, careful when we're donating uh, to charity. Um, I would recommend, you know, making sure that the URL is legitimate. Uh, make the proper phone calls if you're really not sure. Show it to somebody else if you uh, are, are skeptical. You know, the best thing that you can do with any of these kinds of scams is ask questions. Be skeptical. Don't just take things for granted um, because they're the stuff that really does exist. So uh, how do we navigate this jungle of scams? So uh, one thing I really recommend is if you're shopping online, uh, use a credit card and not a debit card. So uh, credit cards will usually provide some kind of fraud protection. Um, you know, and not even, not every credit card fraud, uh, you know, fraud attempt is done because you gave out your information online to the wrong site. Sometimes uh, the, uh, sometimes the seller uh, the person who ran your card breached the information. Sometimes uh, there there are other ways that they can get these credit card numbers, but at least if you have a credit card, you can usually have the charges voided and removed from your account um, if you protect yourself. Debit cards, it could be a lot more difficult, if not impossible. Um, you really need to research the retailers and charities that you visit. Um, you know, obviously we're not going to be really worried about Amazon.com. Um, but let's give a, a, one example would be like going to eBay. And you go to eBay, you know, eBay is a legitimate site. But think of the sellers within eBay. You know, there are, I guess, probably thousands of sellers on eBay these days. And some of them sell, some of them are places like Best Buy, you know, an actual retailer that happens to be selling on eBay. Uh, others are wholesalers who sell and they make their money entirely through eBay. And that's great too, but some of them are fake or they sell fake merchandise. Uh, and so we really need to be careful where we source our stuff from. If you've never been to a website before and you're at this website and they are offering a terrific deal on something and you've never heard of it, you know, do some research on the site. You know, have you, have you shopped at um, holidayshop.com or whatever the whatever this new site is that you've never visited before, why don't you Google, do a Google search on it, see what people have to say. Does it have a better business bureau report? Um, there's all sorts of things, uh, re, uh, information out there that you can find to make sure that these retailers are legitimate. And the same goes for charities. Um, you know, there's a couple sides to this. One is obviously making sure that we're donating to people who are not fraudsters and, and criminals, but also there are charities out there that maybe are not the best with the money. Uh, you know, they, they don't, spend the money effectively or, or what have you. And uh, this is your money and you want to go to a good cause. So you want to do your, your power research. And again, uh, usually a Google search will give you some really good information or, or, or uh, you know, ask a friend, ask around. Uh, research products you're about to buy. So uh, oftentimes uh, on Black Friday, especially in electronics, um, you'll see these blowout deals. You know, this thing is, this is 75% off. This Bluetooth headset that has noise canceling headphones and all this other stuff. And it was great. It was $100 and now it's 20 bucks on Black Friday. What a terrific deal. 
Um, but be careful because sometimes those products are no longer supported by the manufacturer. Uh, sometimes they have security flaws. You know, uh, these things can exist with real companies, not just uh, not just um, counterfeit goods, but real companies can put out products. Those products have security flaws. The vendor drops support, and then all of a sudden they're on a pallet on Black Friday. Uh, and people are buying up these products that have fundamental flaws in them. So I would be very, very skeptical of uh, those things that are are, are uh, cheap. Now it could be that it's just a good deal, but uh, you should do your homework on the product. Look up the, take the model number, do a Google search on it, find out if it's being supported, uh, that sort of thing. You could Google, you know, X product and then security, and you'll probably get some interesting information. Um, uh, one sec, there we go. Uh, look where the link actually goes. So, um, you know, usually when you hover over uh, hover over links, excuse me, uh, in an email, uh, it will tell you the actual donate uh, destination, um, uh, and that's really important, especially with phishing out there. Uh, verify. Uh, so again, if you're not sure about anything, uh, verify. If you get that email from a family member saying that they need that money for that plane ticket to get back home, probably worth giving them a call uh, before just giving the money. Uh, if you aren't sure about the charity, call up the charity. Call up, uh, you know, people who are close to you. Um, we're all in this together, kind of, when it comes to cybersecurity, and nobody has all the answers. Um, there are some really clever scams out there, uh, and uh, we need to help each other. Uh, watch what you like on social media. So if you're on Facebook um, and there's some post that goes around and uh, maybe it's about you know, like this if you support uh, such and such charity, um, just be careful because there are people who can see who like those posts or who shared those posts. And if they think that you're a good uh, target, they might start going after you. They might create a fake Facebook account of somebody on your friends list and then start trying to you know, get into a confidence game on Facebook. Uh, and they did this all because they saw you liked something and now knew something about you to begin doing some social engineering. So we really need to be careful about how we interact on social media. It may not seem like much when we, when we click like or we push share or we should check on our friend request, but there are ramifications of, of these actions. Uh, Black Friday is uh, going to be over on Saturday, so we got through the storm, right? Well, uh, really, it's one day and it's one type of crime. So um, there's a lot of scams just today uh, leading up to Black Friday, uh, including Thanksgiving. So um, I don't know uh, it, what you guys are getting in your emails. I know I get emails saying, hey, check out our worst, worst, uh, sharing our Black Friday deals early. We're, uh, we're gonna tease our ad. We're going to start our thing early. You know, we're, we're not doing Thursday, uh, Friday at, at 7 a.m. We're doing Wednesday at 10 p.m. or something like that, our deal or, or whatever it is. Um, you know, and, and scammers work that way too. They wanna beat the rush. You know, all the retailers are rushing to to uh, outpace each other on the Black Friday deals and get your attention, while scammers are going to take advantage of that kind of uh, eagerness and go and go after that stuff. So be very very careful. Um, malware often comes uh, up after the holidays, so um, usually uh, it's all, it, well not usually. There's no hard and fast rule, but uh, oftentimes there's the identity theft. Type of crimes that lead to the holidays because of the uh, transacting and personal information being shared. But then after the holidays, when people start to share things like their family photos and such, uh, oftentimes that's when the malware comes. So usually in the days leading up to the New Year, and I guess also with New Year's Day uh, afterwards. So be careful about that. Uh, the nature of the attacks might change as we get closer to Christmas and as the shopping season winds down and we get into more of the you know, uh, you know, sharing information, getting back to, to normal. Scammers often target people making travel purchases. So um, uh, obviously a big travel season, lots of stuff going on. And, and not only that, when we travel, we have to share personal information for TSA and such. 
Um, so scammers are really targeting people doing that, trying to give them good, you know, quote unquote, good deals on flights and things like that, or, or renting a car or whatever. Uh, they know that travel is heavy, and so they are targeting individuals who who uh, do that stuff. Uh, we'll talk real briefly about secure payment methods. As I mentioned, credit cards offer superior consumer protection as compared to debit cards. You really should use a credit card if you can, uh, if you can do it. I know, uh, I, I know how I am. I don't like paying interest and such on credit cards. I, I, I'm the type who likes to have, you know, get rid of that debt. But um, in terms of consumer protection. Uh, better to use them and then pay it off um, immediately than use a debit card where a charge goes through and the money is then drained from the account and, and you may or may not be able to get it back. Uh, consider PayPal. So uh, PayPal and, and some of the other secure like third-party payers, uh, what's really nice is that they tend to be able to uh, do things from the retailer level. Like, you know, for example, I, I mentioned eBay before. If you are being a purchase through eBay and then you pay with PayPal, PayPal will guarantee the transaction, not just for fraud, but for the quality of the product and things like that. You know, let's say you go on eBay and you buy a product and they ship you a brick in the mail. Uh, you can go through eBay, they will protect you, but also PayPal will protect you. So uh, that's a, another thing you should maybe consider. Um, be careful with that though, obviously, because if you're using PayPal, you need to protect that account. Now, uh, just like anything else, uh, if you have a username and a password into a PayPal account and that doesn't have multi-factor authentication, now someone has access to a payment method, which is probably backed by a bank account or a credit card. So uh, consider PayPal, but do, it, do so in a responsible way. Um, personal checks uh, really should only be used with vendors you truly trust. Um, I know how I am. I barely write any checks anymore, um, and it's usually for things like big ticket items, things that I only can pay with checks. Um, checks, unfortunately, are just not all that secure. They have a lot of personal information, not as well as account number and routing number and things like that. Um, they're kind of passe, and I know maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm showing my age on this, but I just uh, there's not much used for them for almost any transaction these days. Uh, look for HTTPS instead of HTTP. You know, if you're going to be shopping for something and uh, you don't see that HTTPS, which stands for uh, secured, I believe, and basically uh, essentially means that the communications between you and the site is encrypted in transit. So when you send your credit card information to that website to run your, your charge, that that transmission is encrypted, uh, you're basically broadcasting your information. So uh, look at the top of that website, look at the URL. Uh, if you're on that site and you're now about to transmit uh, secure information and there's no encryption there, they're not using what's called an SSL certificate typically to encrypt that information, then you're broadcasting your personal information for the world to see. So um, that's something you really ought to be careful about. Uh, shopping for good tech. So there's another important thing to talk about. Uh, not, not, not all knockoffs are bad, but some of them are cheap for a reason. Uh, what was really interesting after I wrote this slide, I was traveling in um, Denver and I was flying back and I saw this big sign from the Federal Trade Commission talking about, uh, I think it was not, they were showing in the picture, knockoff earbuds. So, you know, uh, AirPods, as you might imagine, the iPhone, the Apple ones, they're really nice products, but they, they have that Apple price tag on them. And there are a number of uh, cheaper competitors. Now, some of these some of these are fine, right? Like they are just knockoffs. They don't have all the features. Maybe they aren't quite as durable or whatever. Uh, and, and that's okay, you know, given the constraint. But uh, at the same time, uh, some of this uh, tech has the uh, uh, potential for causing other security issues. Uh, very recently, there was an article, I believe I shared it on LinkedIn, uh, uh, through our social media for DP Solutions, but um, there was a story about the Android OS and how the flaw existed on the Bluetooth side, so that if you had the wrong kind of headphones that you would use maybe to listen to music or, or make a call without using your hands, 
that someone could break in and steal data from the phone via the Bluetooth headphones that were not secured. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. If the device, the device itself has to have some security. Um, this is something that's going to become more significant uh, in the future as we get into the so-called Internet of Things or IoT, where um, everything is IP enabled. You have a fridge that that talks to the internet to get its updates to the device, or have its uh, you know YouTube streaming on the on the monitor or something like that, or you have a lock on your front door that's electronically controlled and, and talks to the internet or you know you see these uh these um doorbells you know digital doorbells etc these devices um have to be secured and so uh, knockoffs are probably not that bad necessarily but we need to do our product research on them before we make those purchases because we could be inviting a security issue in our home especially what and what's especially ironic is some of the some people who buy these home consumer products, these IoT devices for their homes, uh, do the do those things. They make they make those purchases for a security reason. They want to protect their house. They want to protect their their family, and yet they're opening up a cyber threat to their home. So it's sort of a different. It's sort of a trade off. So we really ought to be careful when we do that stuff. Uh, I mentioned this before. Many of the Black Friday specials are for products that are no longer supported. So uh, really. You know, here this is. I don't think you're going to see this too much uh, in the ads, but imagine, if you will, that uh, a, a computer store is selling uh, Windows 7 PCs on Black Friday special. I wouldn't buy one. I mean, th that product is going to be end of life in January, and uh, so you're going to buy a product that's basically going to be fundamentally insecure moving forward. That's really not a good investment of money. Uh, Buy batteries for your toys, you know, um, and what I mean by that is uh, if you're buying a computer or a mobile device, you know, a very popular thing this year, uh, you would need to buy the accessories to support it, um, and specifically security tools. Um, uh, it's, you shouldn't, let's say you're buying a laptop for a child, um, as an example, or an iPad uh, for a child. We really shouldn't be giving them that device without the proper uh, security set up on it in advance. And so this is kind of the modern day equivalent of putting the batteries uh, with the toys when you buy it. Um, we don't want to give somebody an electronic device that is going to create security problems for them after the fact just by merit of them using it. So we should set these things up probably in advance. Uh, I mentioned the IoT stuff, so Internet of Things is a very, uh, very much a growing field of technology. Uh, we need to be careful because those devices are connected to other devices. They could be used to exploit things on your network or be a point of entry into your network. So um, if you're going to buy something that's Internet enabled, uh, do your homework on it in advance. And feel free to reach out to us if you have a specific question on that IoT stuff. Um, I, I'm happy to give you some uh, pointers. Um, if you're buying something for a kid, make sure you can control the account and payments. So um, again, getting back to the iPad example, uh, you're you're buying your son an iPad for the holidays, and it's connected to your iTunes account, and all of a sudden you see uh, that all of these charges have been made against your credit card for uh, stuff in Fortnite or um, or the or the match three game or something like that. Um, we got to make sure that uh, the kids don't accidentally pay for things using a device. And sometimes, what what is unfortunate, we could go into a whole other uh, shtick about this. But unfortunately, some of these uh, apps are a little good at uh, disguising where the payments occur. You know, they say, buy these gems, and a, a kid doesn't realize they're actually making a purchase. So we really need to make sure that those payment methods are blocked from children uh, before we give them the device. A uh, very common mistake these days. Uh, private browsing and incognito mode uh, can be useful for shopping. Uh, I use this for air, air travel, uh, personally. So. When I'm about to book a flight, I open a, a private browser uh, in Google Chrome. You can click the little dots in the upper right-hand corner and do incognito browsing. Sometimes they call it private browsing, uh, wh whatever it's called on the browser. Um, the good thing about doing this private mode 
is that you're not uh, sharing cookies. So you're not necessarily letting these sites see other sites you've been to. It can control the ads that you see a little bit more. Um, it oftentimes, the based on where you've shopped, sometimes even prices and stuff can change. It's a very weird thing how internet retailers can work uh, once they have a little bit of data on you. So if you wanna protect your, your identity when shopping, uh, private browsing in incognito mode can be useful. It's not to say that you can't do decent shopping without using private browsing or incognito mode, but, um, but doing this has some benefits. So, And uh, that's it for the prepared content for today. I, again, I wanted to leave some time for Q&A. Uh, while you guys get some questions together, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our next webinar. So. Um, as you might imagine, uh, the last normally we do last Wednesdays of each month for our webinars. Uh, I felt like doing it tomorrow is probably not such a good idea with the holiday coming around. And um, we're not going to do one on December 25th. I have a feeling uh, you guys would rather be with your families than listening to me talk about cybersecurity. So uh, we're going to do it on the 18th, which is a week before. And we're going to talk about tech trends and tech trends and planning. So, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about like um, things that you should maybe consider as part of an IT budget in 2020, uh, trends that are out there, you know, sort of forward-thinking things, and just sort of set the stage for where maybe you need to go in 2020, get you thinking before we start the new year, and so we can have a successful uh, plan and really develop uh, where we go with our technology. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Jill. Uh, Jill, I don't know if we have any questions yet, but uh, I thought I'd hand it back to you. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Yeah, we do have a couple of questions coming in, but um, I also want to make note to everybody that the webinar, um, a link to the webinar is actually on our website. If you go to events, um, you can click a link there. I know that's a little bit of a long URL right now. Um, okay, yes. So the first question that came in is, um, I have a lot of staff that are leaving for the holidays. What should I advise them to do before they leave? Right. So um, there are a few things. Uh, one would be, uh, obviously, we want to make sure, especially if they're going to be away for a while, that uh, that their device is getting the updates it needs. You know, um, uh, we want, in general, in terms of what we do for our clients, for our patch management, we like the devices to not completely fall asleep, but be accessible so we can keep patching them. Um, I think it is very important, obviously, that accounts are locked um, and that, uh, we have uh, we make sure that we don't have open access to these devices. Um, I think it's really important before they leave to communicate stuff. So um, you know, I think this is sort of an obvious thing, but like I know I'm taking a four-day weekend at the end of this week. You know, people should know probably that I'm not. You know, I'm only going to be local. That I'm not traveling to say Los Angeles, California, where uh, you know, if I someone was to send a message saying, "Help, I need a, a plane ticket. Help me out," they know where where I exist on the planet. Um, it's mostly the same sorts of things that I would recommend when you go home at night. Uh, just make sure your machine is locked, that you're, that you're still getting those patches and updates, that you're allowing the maintenance to occur on your machine, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and then depending on your specific situation, maybe some other things that, uh, that are, that, depending on your context that I could speak to, but uh, that's about it. All right, great. Um... Another question is, is it safer to pay with a credit card or with your phone, like Apple Pay or Google Pay? That's a good question. So um, the I don't think there is a safer. I mean, typically Google Pay, Apple Pay are usually backed by credit cards. Um, Apple Pay is, uh, these things are nice because they are uh, sort of the same way that like a, a logically that like a chip card works where you have uh, something that is in your possession that's decrypted at the point of sale can really help minimize the fraud. So I think both of them are pretty good. Um, the good thing usually about using Google Pay or Apple Pay and stuff is you tend to have a little bit more visibility on the transactions. I know for most people, they're not necessarily seeing in real time where all their credit card transactions are. It's a little easier when you see it on your phone. Um, but a, a, a caveat on all of this is that uh, unfortunately there are tools that will literally strip information from credit cards that sit in your pocket and phones that sit in your pocket. Um, I would also say, of course, that um, it's really important that we make sure that the devices themselves, the phones, 
the and the devices that allow us to make these transactions are patched up. You know, if you were using a old iPhone that's not being supported by Apple anymore, I mean, I don't think Apple Pay works on that, but uh, we can't really secure a transaction if the device itself is not secured. So uh, we need to make sure that it gets the latest OS updates, that the apps that we're using are properly updated. Um, a lot of times with financial transactions, they will usually require updates before they will even operate. But I don't like to take that stuff for granted. I say we need to go in and make sure ourselves the stuff is is properly patched up. Um, so in terms of which is safer, I don't think maybe necessarily one is more safe than the other, but I certainly wouldn't hesitate to use the cell phone thing if, if the device is properly maintained. Okay, great, good to know. We do have one more question in, and is it safe to use third-party discount websites for shopping, such as Shopify, Etsy, Google Shopping, eBay? Yeah. So uh, I talked, uh, there's a few considerations. The answer is in general, yes. I mean, uh, you know, we talk about all these threats, but you know, the majority of these things are legitimate. It's not like that. But first we have to keep in mind the nature of counterfeit stuff. There are so many counterfeit items on the internet. Um, I was watching a documentary about sneakers and uh, how sneakers, uh, you know, Nikes and stuff are, are created, you know, fake ones are created and then sold on the internet. And, um, and uh, there's also you know, obviously ethical concerns with that as well in terms of how these things are produced. But, um, but that stuff is way, way out there when it uh, comes to third party resellers, especially eBay and reselling sites. It's really important that in fundamentally that you know where the stuff is coming from. Uh, if you don't know the site, if you've never been there before, uh, you should be more skeptical. Certainly sites that are, are originated where they ship stuff out of China, for example, like for example, wish.com. I'm not saying wish.com is necessarily the worst site, but I mean, there's no mystery that when you go to wish.com and you buy something from them, that it's being shipped from, from China and you're getting a generally low, lower quality product. Again, not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but you do need to be careful and, and make sure you're getting what you expect. Um, it's often if it's if the savings isn't that great i often ask people why would you shop at a third party site you know if you're going to save a buck why are you why are you doing this um but uh you know anything is okay if you do the proper research you're using a secure device and you're being careful but we should definitely be skeptical of these third party sites before we actually transact with them All right, hopefully that answers that question. Um, I don't see any more questions coming through, so if that's it, we wanna do you wanna wrap things up, Ben? Sure. Well, uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, again, I uh, please make sure you check out our webinar next month, as well as if you want to go to the website, we have all sorts of educational content we provide. If you're not already signing up for the security tips, please make sure to reach out to us about getting on the security tips list for emails. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing you all next month for the December webinar, and I hope you all have a great day.